Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode. Today I'm going to present you another knife made by a French maker. His name is Alain Valette. Now I'm not going to talk about him too much in this video because I already presented him in a previous video when I reviewed this knife. So link will be in the description below if you want to know more about him and if you want to see the review of this knife. That is in many ways very similar to this one but also in many ways very very different. Now yeah just let's take a closer look to this one. It has a very unique mechanism and actually I'm gonna open it right now to show you. So it has an extractable button just like the ones you can find on watches and actually watches uh, was the inspiration for this mechanism and then you just turn it to open the knife. So let me just adjust it a little bit, that's better. So that's basically the mechanism. Once it's uh, open, you just put it back in and the blade is locked. Very, very nice and unique mechanism. Uh, as you can see, there is an awful lot going on on this knife. Uh, still it's very nice looking I think don't usually like when there is too much going on but there it's very uh, harmoniously made I would say if that's an English word and uh, all made in the same style and I think the color works well not too flashy not too over the top so yeah very harmonious Let's take a closer look to the materials. So basically we've got uh, titanium liners that are very fine, very nicely done, with carbon fiber scales on both sides that have been carved in uh, many ways, many places. Then we've got a, a Gibeon Meteorite overlay. On both sides. Then let's take a closer look to the backspacer. How cool, <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? So we've got carbon fiber inlays in the backspacer then a carbon fiber inlay in the button and carbon fiber inlays in the blade too what's very nice is that the inlays are made in a dovetail way so here on the blade you can see it and it's very interesting very nice to be able to see that and it's also the same for the inlays on the backspacer. So these inlays are not going anywhere. Oops, yep. Then we've got uh, red um, fiber plates that are certainly made of either micarta or G10. Just under the titanium scales. Very discreet but works very well with the black of the carbon fiber and then we've got on the screws also on the carbon fiber inlay and also here on some parts of the the inlays of the backspacer we've got the varnish red epoxy paint that matches perfectly well the fiber uh, plates So very, very nicely done. Then we've got blue anodizing on these uh, titanium liners. Again, very discreet. Just to show you a closer look on these liners. Very nice here on the button too. Then over there, so this is where all the mechanism is. Basically how it works, we've got an endless screw in 
this uh, box that allows to action the blade. And we've got a carbon fiber inlay here just to, to close the box with a titanium that is also blue anodized on the top. So lots of little pieces in there, lots of details. There you can see that there is a, a kind of pearlash finish here and also on the inside of the knife and I think it looks very uh, nice very classy on the inside we've got an engraving oops are we gonna be able to see that? focus please Archimede Eureka number no. one made in 2016 so this knife is called the Eureka. It's a variation of the Archimede, which is basically this one, with a very similar mechanism, but at the same time very different because you don't action it the same way. It has a crank and you open it just like a music box. So this one is called the Archimede. And this is the Eureka version of the Archimede with this crown inspired from watches and uh, yeah very different sensation in your hands and these two are also a variation from the Ecla so it means glow in English so sorry a lot of names there but the Ecla is basically the shape of the knife that Alain Valet uses a lot for a lot of his knives it's a kind of a, a base that allows him to create, so you have some friction folders, you have some more complicated, uh, just like this one. And yeah, they all look very, very different because Anna Valet is, as I already mentioned on the channel, probably one of the most creative makers I know. So yeah, this is just one of his shapes that he declines a lot in uh, many, many different ways. Just like these two, when you look at them, uh, <laughs> They have the same shape, actually let me just open this one, they have the same shape, but I mean all the rest is completely opposite. The, the mechanism is the same idea, but they have different ways to action them. Uh, they also have a very different feeling in the hand, this one is actually heavier, it feels at least heavier than this one, but this one is thicker than this one so very different sensation in your hands this one looks a lot more modern this one is more a, a kind of steampunk style we've got completely different materials uh, completely different techniques on there we've got some engraving there we've got some etching etching over there etching on the blade there we've got some carving, overlay, uh, more modern materials with this titanium. I mean, <laughs> these knives are just completely different, which I think is pretty amazing to achieve that with basically the same model to start off. Anyway, let's just come back to our knife for the review. Uh, the blade is made of 12C27, so it's not very famous outside of Europe, but it is very famous here in France. It's used a lot, especially for uh, more regional knives. It's produced in Sweden. We've got a hollow grind on the blade with a very fine hand-rubbed satin finish. I'm not even sure we're going to be able to see that on the camera. Very fine. Uh, there you can see it's flat, but near the tip the blade has been rounded. So another detail to look at there. Basically there is, I mean there are details 
everywhere <laughs> to look at on this knife. A lot of things you don't see at first when you pick the knife up, but when you take a closer look to it, I mean, yeah, there are things to see everywhere. There uh, we've got, I thought it was an inlay at first, but it's an engraving on the blade that looks dark because uh, there has been an oil quenching done on this blade and then he just left in the engraving the rough finishing after the heat treatment. On there, very very discreet, you've got another engraving with the signature of Alain Valet. I just love the way he did that. Very discreet and uh, just like the signature of an artist on a painting with the date. <laughs> even the camera has difficulties to focus. It doesn't even know where to look at. So yeah, I think we had a good look on all the details. Something there, you can see there is a, a piece of steel that has been added and this is a spring that acts on the button just to make it click just like uh, it does on a real watch on the inside you can see a little screw there for the mechanism and yeah that's it for the details. I just think these two knives look really amazing. I tend honestly to prefer the the crank, the version with the crank. I don't know, it's uh, I think there is something more uh, poetic, uh, a bit more magical about it because it makes me think of a music box and I'm, I don't know, music boxes are have something a bit magical. But uh yeah, I get why a lot of people would probably prefer the version with the button because it reminds of watches and a lot of uh, knife enthusiasts also like watches. And also, and that's one of the reasons why Alain Valet uh, did this variation of the mechanism, it's because people tend to lose <laughs> the cranks and as they are unique, there's only one crank for your knife. Uh, some, in, a, in a way it's cool because you can only open it if you have the key. But on the other side, it's a bit complicated if you lose it. So you have to send it to Alain Valet who has to make another one. So yeah, not very practical there. But uh, I don't know, there's something very, uh, very poetic about it that I really like and in the action, the idea that uh, you're the only one who's able to open it You can't if you don't have the key. So uh, so yeah, anyway, that's it. A very cool knife. Still uh, very usable. I like to, to talk about utility uh, and creativity. That's typically what I would call an art knife because, I mean, there's a lot of uh, creativity going on with the mechanism and all the decoration and everything. But it's still a very usable knife because you've got this uh, very traditional blade with a very fine grinding and a fine edge, very sharp also, and very ergonomic shape overall. So yeah, it would be really, uh, really nice to use. Like, uh, of course, it's not the, the knife that you're gonna carry in your pocket every day, but if you wanna impress some friends uh, at the restaurant, for example, uh, that's the perfect item. Also the kind of thing you would use on a special occasion. And you can probably add that uh, for the maker, it takes between 90 and 130 hours to make these. Of course, depending on the materials, on the, the different finishes. And uh, of course, he can take orders. Uh, and I mean, you can be absolutely sure your knife will be unique. He doesn't make twice the same knife. So that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed it. 
please let me know in the comments below what you think about the knife and also what you which one you prefer actually as usual guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next episode bye bye